It's okay. I'm hit. I'm alive. Sorry. I was gonna drag myself out of my editing hole. I, like an idiot, decided to make my Pokemon Scarlet and Violet review another big mega 30 minute long video. And it is taking me weeks to edit. <sighs> I feel like I'm dying. Oh my God. What am I doing? Why am I here? Where's Chris Pratt? Actually, speaking of, this is really cool. We have Chris Pratt on a Zoom call and we're gonna be reacting to the Mario movie with him. It's, it's like a little way of like making up. Chris, are you there, buddy? Hey, Word. Thanks for having me. No, yeah, I'm really glad to have you on. What's your experience been like working on it so far? Well, it made me British for one, but I had a good... Oh, yeah. How long am I going to keep this bit going? I have no idea what footage my editor is going to use for that. <laughs> well, Dragon Quest Treasures is out. Are you guys liking it? I've heard nobody talking about it. We also have Final Fantasy Crystal Core Crisis, whatever, coming out sometime soon, if not today. And that looks like it's really going to be sick. And I think those are really the last couple we're gonna get this year, and then we're kind of just waiting for Fire Emblem. What the heck was it called? Three Hope? Three ha Three uh, Fire Sparks? Uh, am I okay? Boo! <laughs> Guess what? You thought you were watching this YouTube video? No, you're being hacked right now. I'm hacking your phone, your tablet, even your TV. Heck, I'm even hacking this cat. <laughs> I don't know how, but this cat wasn't using ExpressVPN, so guess what? It's getting hacked too! You know why? Because every time you use an uncrypted internet connection, like you are probably doing right now, you're sending all your information out across the world for anybody to see. It's like riding a postcard. Yeah, yeah, look, the stamp, and you throw it on there, and everything that you've written on that thing, anyone can see. I bet you stick that bad boy in an envelope by using a VPN, like ExpressVPN. A VPN? And create a secure tunnel between your device and the internet. That way, your information won't get stolen or worse, sold to ad agencies. <laughs> but guess what? I like to have fun too. And there's a ton of fun to be had with a VPN. Many websites or apps are blocked and restricted depending on where you are in the world. And by using a VPN, you can unblock those. That means you can start watching all your favorite Netflix shows that aren't available in your country. Rick and Morty, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Modern Family. And what about stuff that's cheaper in other countries? Well, it's cheaper for you now, too. <laughs> so find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box down below. ExpressVPN.com forward slash beatemups. I gotta tell you guys, it's a blast doing these, but if I don't get a coffee... Hey, 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 I thought we were done the heck, Gary? I want to talk about a lot of stuff, but first, and I know this was a week ago, shut up. My opinions on things are worth hearing even a week later. I'm very important. Every year, I pick what I think is going to win at the Game Awards, and I feel like I do okay most years. This year, I really nailed it. I feel like I got most of this right. Best esports game, Valorant. I'm pretty sure I voted for that. Zelda won most anticipated. I mean, that was kind of a given. Best debut game I got right. Best multiplayer game. I didn't think the Game Awards would allow Splatoon 3 to beat Call of Duty. This seems so unreal. I'm just glad that people are showing recognition to Nintendo games. And I do think this is the one that deserved to win. Best sim strategy? I don't know if I actually agree with it, but that is what I picked. Best family game was a confusing category, but we did pick Kirby and that won. And I'm so glad that game got recognition. Of course, Elden Ring won best RPG. I mean, I'm sorry. Sorry, everybody else, but it was so obvious. I feel like the Game Awards kind of give themselves away sometimes. You can't have a whole category for best RPG and have one of the games in that category also be nominated for Game of the Year, but then three of the other games aren't in Game of the Year? I mean, basic math knowledge, I don't even know what word it is, tells you that if those three games aren't in Game of the Year, they're not as good as Elden Ring. You get what I'm saying? The only other game that could have won this category was the Xenoblade 3 because it's also nominated for Game of the Year. Best action adventure game was, of course, God of War. Best action game was actually Bayonetta 3. Are we paying attention here? I feel like Nintendo actually came out pretty great in the Game Awards this year. Best indie, I also got right, but again, this was just the basic science. I mean, Stray is voted for Game of the Year and none of these other games are. Best performance was Chris Judge. He also had the best performance on the night of the Game Awards. He had a 10-minute long performance 
performance on stage. My friends and fellow podcast co-host Bob Wolf and Scootish, we all watch reacted to the Game Awards together. And oh my God, that was so much fun. But when it got to Chris's speech and he just kept talking, oh my God, I, I started to get really anxious because my guy did not stop talking. It just went on and on and on and on. Bob walked away for a good three minutes. And when he came back, Chris was still talking. <laughs> This amazing, wonderful. Oh no, man! Of actors. <laughs> yeah. He uh, came back. Best audio I got wrong, but we won't talk about that. Best score and music I also got wrong. I voted for Elden Ring. Best art direction. I voted for Horizon on this one only because of the mechs. Best narrative was always obviously going to God of War. Best game direction was always going to Elden Ring. I should have put money on it because I tweeted saying that I would put stupid amounts of money on Elden Ring winning. I just, I knew it, it's so... Oh, oh, God, uh, uh, it's so it was so obvious to me. You gotta take your bias out of it. You really do. The reason why I think people are getting confused is just because they are the complete opposite of each other and they appeal to different audiences. Elden Ring is very much open world, go wherever you want, brutally difficult. Everything is your own adventure tailored to the way you want to play. Whereas God of War is much more the straight cut action adventure game. It's narrative driven. It's very much like you're playing a great movie. It can be as hard as you want it to be but could also be very casual and i think a lot of people love that experience and just don't understand the other experience but i think what you need to understand when Elden ring released it took the world by storm everybody was playing it everyone was talking about it for months people were still talking about bosses or beating it it was in the zeitgeist for so much longer it made such a bigger impact god of war's hype has already quieted down and ultimately god of war ragnarok didn't do anything too different or overtly special over what the first release did, whereas Elden Ring completely shook up its game genre and created something very special, the likes I don't think we've ever seen before. There's a bunch of things I couldn't predict, like all the reveals that were launched and released and revealed during the Game Awards. And there were so many good ones. Jeff Keighley, if you happen to be watching, this was by far the best Game Awards we've ever had. I really can't stress that enough. Every year I feel like I complain, I have something negative to say, or maybe it was a little snoozy. I have nothing bad to say about this Game Awards. I actually feel really bad that it was so great. It went off without a hitch and then it ended with some little walking up on stage and ruining the biggest moment of the night. I hate that it ruined Jeff's really great event. I don't want to be big headed here because I really don't want to be big headed. But I know Jeff has seen my previous videos. I've had people tell me that he's seen them. And I know that he does engage a lot with the community and, and, and really cares about feedback. And something I said a couple years ago was they would never show the clips of the actors in their roles. They would never show highlights of the actors performance. They would just list the names, give an award and move on. And maybe Jeff Regretted giving Chris a microphone this time, but they did what I said I think they should. Show clips of everyone's great performance, and it gave everybody who hasn't played the game context on who was winning and what they did to get the award. It really felt official. I think they did a great job. And I would never have expected some of these insane reveals. I mean, we started off with freaking Dead Cells. Dead Cells was the very first game I ever covered on my channel in the I'm Addicted to series. And that title took off and I've made so many others since then. I've always wanted to go back and play more. And now they're collaborating with Castlevania, which is wild because Dead Cells is a game that's inspired by the whole genre that Castlevania created. That reminds me of like when Crypt of the Necro Dancer people got to work with Zelda, which is so cool. Such a cool moment for the developers and I'm so happy for them. I'm not going to go through everything. I think the new Hellboy game looked pretty cool. We got some DLC for Horizon that looks pretty cool. Easily the most epic moment of the night for me was Hades 2. I love Hades so much. It's one of my favorite games. Then we have the Bayonetta game that I talked about. The prequel, artistic, indie looking Bayonetta game. I made a tweet about this and people are already upset at me. I'm sorry. I'm a little worried about it. It's giving me Travis Strikes Again vibes of this smaller budget kind of experimental version of the main title games. And again, I'm here for it, but it's $60. Ah. <sighs>
shit. I just, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think we definitely have to see more of this game before I get too excited. The people that made Celeste are making a new game. Okay, now I'm being just a buzzkill in general. I don't think this game looks as pretty or as engaging to me as Celeste was. I mean, if I just pause on this one screen, I mean, it looks kind of like a Flash game. I mean, I don't know. I need to see more of this game for sure. I don't know if I ever talked about The Last Jedi game. I always forget what it's called. The, or the, the guy with the orange hair. That game was really fun. I played through it a couple of times, but they're making a sequel and I, I loved it. I loved it. One game I never talked about, even though I wrote a whole freaking review that I never even shot was Death Stranding. I really did think it was fantastic. It was an experience I enjoyed very thoroughly. But I think the biggest issue in that game was the first three chapters set you up to really make you feel feel like Sam Porter Briggs was trying to undertake a very mundane and massive task. The first few chapters, they really wanted you to feel that trudge. Oh, I really have to walk everywhere. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere in the fourth chapter, it's like a firework goes off and the whole game is a roller coaster from there. And I feel like that was just a heavy bar and people never got through the first few chapters and then they just thought it was a walking simulator. And I really hope that the pacing is fixed for this sequel. There was Diablo 4 or Armored Core. I know I mentioned some things that a lot of people are going to be really hyped for. And that's the thing. I think every reveal catered to a lot of people. And like, you can look at a reveal and not be excited for it, but at least acknowledge that it's a big hype reveal that a lot of fan bases are going to be stoked over. They did a really good job. But we also got to look at the Mario movie again. And this is where I want to bleed into my next conversation of, um, I'm pretty sure I was wrong about this whole movie. And I even legitimately do want to apologize to Chris Pratt. Not that he's watching or cares. Well, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Um, probably not. Definitely not. Initially, when all the voice actors for the Mario movie was revealed, it was obviously a massive meme around the internet. I think I had a pretty epic reaction to it. What? First, what? Whoa, 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 what? Who will be played by what? Chris Pratt. No! Why? So cool. What? And I think Arlo by far had the best reaction. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Donkey as well. What? He's so cool. Mario will be talking a lot in the movie. He's Please so cool. It felt like a joke. The biggest thing I couldn't wrap my head around was that none of the actors had ever done voice character work before. And what I mean by that isn't they weren't in another animated movie, but every animated movie they've ever been in, they just played themselves. Chris Pratt just did his own voice in the Lego movie. Seth Rogen did his own voice in Sausage Party and on and on and on and on. But then we keep getting more looks at it and it's kind of all making sense to me. So this was the trailer from the Game Awards, but before this, we actually got another look at the movie, and I want to start there. First up, the music. Some of them give me chills. Like, I absolutely love the care and the passion they've put into the music, but it doesn't stop there. Every single scene, a crammed with nostalgia, hidden moments, secrets. It's very clear that whoever has made this movie in conjunction with Miyamoto has had so much passion for the Mario universe. And that's why I've really come around on this. Let's go. I didn't like that. I'm coming around on it big time, but at first I was like, let's -a go. You didn't even try, Pratt. I'm really sorry, man. Chrissy, I'm really you didn't sorry. Even try. I, I'm so sorry. Cranky Kong in the background there. You've got the new redesign of Donkey Kong, which looks so great. I really still love what Jack Black is doing with Bowser. We hear Charlie Day for the first time. I love Charlie Day, and he is Luigi personified. And then we get Peach. And this is where I came around on. Chris because they've toughened Peach up. She's not a princess who's about to be stolen by Bowser. She's a woman about town. She's rough and tough and ready to fight. And she has this strong, sturdy voice to Bowser is coming. Not like a Mario. It's like a, it's a strong voice. I love what they've done with the character. And when I loved that, it felt contradictory of me to then be upset with Chris for not doing character work, right? Because at that point we have another character who's just a human, just a person just doing their voice. And I love it. So then I was like, ugh, well, now I would be hypocritical to be mad at Chris for not going full in on the Mario voice. Yeah, you f 
And look at this scene I paused on. It's like right out the freaking game. The bridge and everything. So good. Tanuki Mario, Fireball. We had a clip of all the Yoshis running. Also talking about the galaxies. Okay, 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 okay. Can you imagine the crowd launch day in the theater seeing this scene for the first time? Screaming out of their seats for freaking Mario Kart in the movie. Trailers ruin everything. I feel like they didn't have to show this. They could have left this out. This scene is actually what sold me on Chris. There's two parts here. Listen. <laughs> I'm actually really impressed. I think he nailed that. Listen to this first laugh. It is such a nice blend of Chris and Charles. <laughs> I dare you at home to do a better Mario laugh than what Chris just did. <laughs> No, man, I couldn't do better than that. And then the Wahoo, which some people have said is a little weak. Wahoo! I don't know, for the moment, the way it's animated, it's kind of just like a nice little Wahoo. But also, he's playing this character more grounded, I guess, more real. So rather than going Wahoo and like way over the top, like it's almost silly that he even does that in general. So the fact that he even leaned into it a little bit is already kind of silly. Now we have another look at it too. And this isn't even a trailer. This is actually a scene from the movie. I love that they have these coin blocks and I guess they've like got them in the town and their job is to hit them all day to get money out of it. Mario really has no ass in this movie, huh? He is not dragging a dump truck. That's for sure. I didn't even notice that said antiques. The old coins and the old 8-bit. My God, that's so cute. Listen to the music, man. Wait up. Let's go back to this one real quick. Listen to the music here. Oh, it's so good, dude. Oh my God. And then you have more of that remixed music here. It feels like you're watching the movie, but like it's all the video game levels, like the Donkey Kong versus Mario, the Mario Kart, just the platforming. But not only have they done those Easter eggs, but they've put the music in that we love from those parts of the games. And they've just twisted them into like this movie cinematic version. And the characters are so good. And I don't, I was so wrong. I have no complaints. I honestly, I do think this is going to be the best video game movie we have ever had. I mean, I know the bar is like abysmally low, but I think this is going to smash barriers. It's going to crush the box office. I'm all in. Day one, midnight release. I can't wait to watch it. Get Chris back on the phone. I'm still here. just want to say I'm sorry, man. No, I, that's you're doing okay, great, man. You really are doing great. No, just a you. quick question though, Chris. Uh, sure. What? what What was the name of the things you used to stomp on at the, in the arcade? Coopers. Coopers, right. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, one. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah, I forget yeah. too. But I'll let you go. You've probably got the next ga Galaxy movie to, to film. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks Thank for hanging you. out, Chris. Well, and thank all of you for watching the video. I was really excited to talk about all of this, but now I need to send this to my editor so I can get back to editing the Pokemon review, which I'm really hoping will go live a couple days after this. I'm almost done, I think. I love you guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the Game Awards. Let me know what you think of the Mario movie. And I uh, hope you're having a happy holidays. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. Get out of here. Bye. See ya.